everybody and welcome to another episode of Design Cinema. This is Feng Zhu speaking and we are at episode 107, how to add details in your concept designs. So in the last episode, 106, I talked about how to get a job and what kind of portfolio content you should prepare. And I was going to do some examples of those, but prior to that, I want to cover this very, very important topic, which is details. So a lot of young students, right, you're learning at home, details are one of those things you hear all the time. Where, how do I put details? Where do I add details? And it's a pretty confusing topic because we do even see that with our own students. Sometimes they'll spend hours and hours adding details sort of in a wasted spot. Uh, all that time gets uh, gets wasted essentially because when you look at the bigger picture, the design is not so good, the overall form is not so good. So even though the student did spend a lot of time, the end result is not that uh, useful in the portfolio. So today's episode is really talking about where details go and how to break this down. So it's not about drawing, it's about understanding. Okay, so today we're not gonna be doing too many drawing uh, demos. Uh, that'll come in episode 108, in which I start to actually uh, put those projects in practice. Today, let's break down the fundamentals of details. And there's gonna be a lot of stuff, okay? So I'm, I'm doing a slideshow here in Photoshop. So you can see we have a bunch, but I don't think this will take too long. I think today's episode maybe run for a little bit over an hour, I'm guessing here. All right, let's talk about the index here, what, what we're gonna be covering. So first, we're gonna be breaking down the details, okay? What is details all about? What, what makes them work, okay? Uh, next, we're gonna jump into first read. Uh, next, we're gonna go into visual focus. And uh, we're going to be talking about something called keeping it simply complex. I know this sounds like a run on sentence here, but uh, I'll explain that as we get there. And finally, we'll be putting it all together. OK, so it's a Friday afternoon. Well, actually, it's a Friday morning here. So a weekend's coming up. Hopefully this episode will get onto YouTube before the weekend. So some of you could put this in practice. So again, these episodes, these design cinemas are mostly geared for students preparing a portfolio or learning on your own. If you're a pro, you're already doing this. Uh, even if you never watched something like this before, you're doing it anyways because you're professional and your work obviously works. But these are things that we see students often uh, run into, right? Issues. All right, let's jump in. Uh, breaking down details. Uh, let me make sure I'm, uh, let me get a layer here. Whoop, let me make sure. I, all right, let's see. Breaking down details. Let me get on layer so I can actually draw on top of this without breaking my slides here. All right, <clears throat> first, let's look at this. Right, so I put a couple of images here of just very uh, standard designs we see in the industry, right? An environment, a costume or character, a, uh, a detail of that costume, and a prop, okay, or a vehicle. So very standard things. Now, at first glance, we understand what we're looking at, but let's break down what works, what kind of details make these things read, okay? So here's, oh man, I, I changed my layer setting again. All right, let me do it this way so I could draw on top. Okay, so. The first thing that happens when we look at a design, in this case, this, uh, this castle tower, is that we actually see the silhouette. This is where the human eye functions. We don't look at the individual bricks. We don't look at little tiny details in the clock. We get an overall feel of this design. That's the first thing. And this silhouette is gonna become very important as I go down the, uh, the slides here. Now, what happens is your eyes very quickly starts to focus on the second and third level details. This happens within a few seconds of looking at the image. But as a concept artist and a designer, we have to know how to evenly distribute this so we capture the read in this format of silhouette, second level details, and third level details, okay? So let me slow this down and let's uh, discuss this in, in a more uh, precise uh, uh, measures here. So silhouette. We see the tower, okay? We see the very various forms in the tower. So what makes these forms pop out? Actually, that is part of the second level, uh, second level details, right? This big tower in the middle, these two side towers, this clock tower, perhaps this little window over here and this little uh, window down below. These things, what they're doing is that they start to break out the silhouette. If we took these things away, this tower wouldn't be a tower anymore, okay? That sounds like common sense. But uh, you'll see the students will do things in which all these secondary details are within the silhouette. So you cannot actually see it. So the second level details are not contributing to the silhouette. So the takeaway here is that your second level details is helping the actual silhouette or actually constructing the silhouette, okay? So these things are very, very important. So what are third level details? Well, third level details generally exist within the second level details. They help refine that extra level of finish, but they don't contribute to the overall bigger 
uh, I guess average of the silhouette. Okay, so even though these little little pillars in here, they're contributing to the silhouette, but they're actually within the secondary. Okay, so for example, the windows, these little support beams, the uh, the the uh, clock letters, right? The rooftops, the little tiny sculptures inside. Yes, they're very very important, but they support the second level details. Okay, let me keep going, and you will see how this will start to make sense as we uh, as we go here. Next slide, we have the uh, the pilot here. This is an SR-71 pilot. So at first glance, we see the silhouette, okay? We see uh, some pretty interesting forms happening. So how are those forms made? Those forms are made by the second level details, the helmet, the life support system case that uh, he's carrying here. These kind of inflatable inflatable uh, packs, right? All these things all over these pressure pads, all these kind of storage packs, the big gloves. These are all big details that in turn makes the silhouette, okay? Now, what are the third level details? Those like the zipper, the little oxygen connectors, uh, the radio thing, the little wires, these are all pretty important there, but they don't break the silhouette. They stay within the second level details. And this is the one, two, three read that we want to capture. So imagine if we don't have the helmet on, we don't have these packs, we just have a essentially a nude person standing here. Well, you don't have any designs happening here. That's just the base structure, right? To build the silhouette, to make the costume come to life, we have to start to plan in the second level detail phase. But a lot of students will start with the third level. They start doing little screws, or say eyeball, or fingernails and stuff like that. That thing doesn't matter yet. Those are such low level details, but important, we have to have it. But we want to start here. Okay, so you're gonna hear me repeating this over and over as we uh, as we go here. Um, but let's keep going here because it gets more way more interesting. All right, so now I actually took that SR seventy one pilot's helmet and did another pass because the way this stuff works is that the second level detail, if it's a nice form, it itself will have its own one two three reads. Okay, so that helmet has its own silhouette because. It has interesting second level details, right? The visor, the little sun cap, you know, the sun visor to protect the eyes, the, uh, the, the, the twisting thing to make the helmet go up and down, all these big knobs. These things are contributing to what makes this helmet look cool. If you took all those out, this would just be a round white sphere, right? It may be interesting, but not so interesting in a, in a design sense for a portfolio, okay? Especially for students. So it has these interesting second level details but it also has third level details, right? The person's glasses, all these little screws and nuts in here, all these tiny things, but these things don't break silhouette, not from a major average point of view, okay? You see the big shapes first. And get this, this little knob here to uh, rotate the, uh, uh, which we have the helmet here, or the visor, has its own one, two, three, right? It has a pretty interesting shape just on its own. It has this kind of thing that comes out here. It has this little uh, octagon shape on the bottom. So how are those made? Well, those are also made by secondary details, right? So then within that, you have the little screws. So you can see this keeps going. This one, two, three, one, two, three keeps going. And even that little knob has a silhouette have secondary details, and then within the secondary details, you have the third level, right? The little, the little um, notches for the screws, right? So if you look at it as a whole, this is what fifth level details are, this is what fourth level details are, this is what third level details are, this is secondary, and this is silhouette. So this is the way the details flow, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a costume, an environment, right? A vehicle, a prop, this is how we generally distribute detail. So we tell our students, if you're starting a concept art, if you're already doing level four and level five, or even, even level three details, you're probably doing things backwards. Focus on this first. What are your secondary details? Do those break silhouette? Okay, so breaking silhouette means these forms exist outside of the body. And uh, I'll have some examples to show you what that means. Okay, for example, what I'm wearing today, right? I have a cap and I have this kind of just a shirt. Nothing in here is breaking silhouette. But if I put a, uh, a shoulder pad on, right? I put a chest plate on, right? I put some, uh, whoops, some headphone on, like a big old Navy SEAL looking thing, right? That's gonna start to break my silhouette and that's gonna make your designs more interesting. So, and again, for students, okay? Pros could pull off very simple designs, but that is not really, really ideal for students because it adds a high level of difficulty. It also re uh, requires less detail, requires more form language. So these are things that we generally advise our students to stay away from. We want students to do things like this. Interesting helmet, why? 
interesting second level details, interesting third level, interesting fourth level, interesting fifth level. Okay, let's keep going here. All right, so now we're moving to first read. Okay, we just talked about when you first look at the image, is it interesting? And let's not worry about level four, level five details yet. So I have some examples here of various subject matters. And I'm pretty sure right off the bat, you can understand exactly what you're looking at, right? You see a castle, a computer, a jet, a tower, and a various different uh, uh, costumes, right? And you know what they are within fractions of a second. That means your eyes did not look at an individual screw. You did not look at like the trigger on this gun, right? You didn't look at like the barrel. You looked at it as a whole. And what happens is you're looking at very, very specific things that are culturally programmed Right from the moment you're born, you're looking at the world, you're looking at movies, you're watching, you're playing video games, and these things are slowly built into you, right? Especially if you're the stronger visual language, the easier it is for, it, uh, for you to identify what they are. So, for example, let's look at the helmet, uh, the samurai here. You see the helmet, you see a, a shiny chest plate, you see a little bit of this, you see him holding a weapon, your brain makes the conclusion that it is a samurai. Same thing with these, uh, these special operators, right? You see, you see something that looks like a gun, you see some helmets, they look like they're not skiers, they're dressed in more uh, tactical outfits, your brain makes the conclusion that these are probably some kind of fighters, right? Same with the musket, you see the barrel, the trigger, the flintlock uh, mechanism, right? You see that, your brain tells you, oh, that's an ancient gun, right? Same thing with the cowboy, you see a cowboy hat, the, the, uh, the, the pants, right? The, the jeans and the gun holster, a horse, takes microseconds, but your brain tells you what you're looking at. Uh, same with an astronaut, right? So why is this important? Why am I talking about this? It's because, again, it comes down to details. These things are big level secondary details that your eyes generally focus on. And when you're doing concept art, those are the first things you want to uh, you want to uh, spend your time on. What are my secondary details? Are these details breaking the form so I could easily identify what this design is within fractions of a second, right? There's no questions here. You're not going to ask someone to look at these summarize and go, hmm, give me a moment to recognize. No, that's not a firefighter. Uh, I don't think that is a, a, a policeman. I don't think, right? Oh, it's a samurai. They don't do that. They tell you within seconds, that's a samurai. And all that knowledge comes from just culture, okay? So if you show this to someone that, for example, you have a, you have a kid that grew up in the, on the moon or something like that, right? Never exposed them to anything on the earth. Obviously, when they look at this, they have no idea what's going on because now this is uh, uh, in, in their heads. But the in entertainment, most of our products we're selling to millions of people. They're pretty familiar with these kind of things. But what happens when you're introducing a new design, right? Something you've never seen before. If you make everything detail oriented, but your secondary details don't tell you what this design actually is, all you're doing is confusing the viewers. So uh, hopefully that starts to make sense here. Let me just break down the rest of these thing, uh, things here, right? So you see this fortress. How come your brain tells you this is some kind of fortress tower thing? Because very quickly you see a wall, you see a couple of towers, you see little window slits, you're done. Your brain tells you this is some kind of castle. This is not a shopping mall, right? This is not someone's house. This looks like some kind of fortress building because of these big secondary details that break silhouette that makes things very easy identifiable. Even this thing, you see a screen, you see a keyboard, your brain tells you some kind of computer. Jet, you see a very slick form, you see triangular wings, you see a cockpit. It's a jet, right? It's a very fast bomber in this case. So here's a tower. So these are all the examples of showing you how to use secondary details to quickly achieve your selling point. Because if you have this, you're good. You're already at a very good starting point. Of course, this cowboy and all these things have details in them, right? If you zoom in on him, look at it. He's got all sorts of things, the strings, the little rope things, the horse, uh, and all this uh, stirrup stuff, right? These are all details. They're very important. They make this thing finished. But when you zoom out, those things are not the first thing you look at. So we want to approach a design in a similar fashion. Okay, let's keep going here. Here's some examples from the entertainment industry, right? So same thing, at first glance, you instantly know what you're looking at. You're not identifying these designs by a detail. You're identifying it by big second level details which contribute to silhouette, right? You see Darth Maul's head. You see him holding a lightsaber. You see him in uh, you know, some of his cloth moving around. You know, okay, that looks like a pretty menacing character. Upon closer examination, you can see, oh, he's got like a nice belt here, right? He's got the little lines within his outfit. But those are things, once you like the design, you can focus on. In fact, even if you don't focus on it, it doesn't matter. This character already works, okay? So when I show this, uh, these examples to our students, 
I ask them, hey, you know, we all, most of us watch Star Wars, right? We uh, Star Wars has been in popular culture for the last, what, 30, 40 years. But if I ask you, hey, can you draw Darth Vader's little plate that's in front of him, you know, right? Darth Vader's got this little thing in front of his chest. Can you draw that exactly how it appears in the film? I can't do it. You know, I'll tell you, I can't do it. I watched Star Wars, well, I watched it maybe 50 something times at this point. I don't know what it looks like. I know it's got something red in there and it might have a button. I'm not even sure. But that's a that's a detail and someone spent time working on that detail. But how come we don't know it? Because Darth Vader works by its big shapes, the helmet, the cape, the uh, the overall feel of his uh, of his chest. But all those little details, they're important. If you take it out, Darth Vader will probably look kind of weird, right? You need those things in there, but that's not how you recognize the design. Okay, so I'm repeating this over and over, but this is very important because we told this to our students all the time as well, and we still see designs that are very boring to look at, but you zoom in, it's got all these fun details, but the overall design is not su uh, supported by a strong uh, first glance silhouette, okay? So let's, let's break these down a bit. Here is a fort, how do you know? Because we see walls and we see towers, just like the previous image that we had earlier, right? Same thing. Okay, uh, you see uh, uh, Barrett here from Final Fantasy, right? The dude's got a huge gun as a as a uh, as a hand, so you recognize this right away. Yes, there are very nice details happening in his pants and all the bells and all that, the zipper. But those are third level, fourth level, fifth level details, all important, but not at this stage. Okay, same thing with uh, Laura Croft here. You see bow on her back. You see a knife. You see her holding a bow. You know, okay, this is some kind of warrior character, right? Here's Arthur Morgan from uh, Red Dead Redemption. Is a cowboy, uh, but you'd recognize that why? A hat, a jacket, a holster, a gun. Uh, that's it. You, your brain takes a micro fraction of a second to recognize that. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway is this slide here. Okay, first read. Let's go through the one, two, three distance rule. Okay, so whatever you're designing, be a character, a vehicle, environment. Use this rule to check it, the three feet rule. Okay, step back from the screen right now. If you're watching YouTube, right, you can step back or push your chair back and see, can you identify your design? Okay, does it look interesting? Does it grab your attention from that far away? Why are we doing that? It's because at that distance, you cannot see details. The only thing you see is the overall form. And those forms, again, are generated by second level details, right? They break the silhouette. So I'm using a Ryu and Chang Li here from Street Fighter as an example, okay? From three feet away, you could really recognize these characters. You're not seeing anything microscopically detailed, but you recognize them. It's because their silhouettes are very, very distinct. Their second level details are very distinct, right? Like Ryu's gloves, his little bandana, Chun Li's little, uh, I don't know what these are, the, the head thing, right? Her little bracelet, uh, the little dress that she wears. We recognize these from very far away. And then that passes, right? I wrote here the most important stage. Once your viewers see that, go, hey, that's pretty cool. Now they will do this. They'll be like, hey, let me spend maybe a few more seconds looking at this, right? So same, you guys go to Art Station and look at the front page. It's the same thing. Your brain will instantly gra uh, gravitate towards those that look good, and that happens within a fraction of a second. Once you like it, then you probably click open it and look at it in detail. But many thumbnails, you probably just skip because you're like, eh, it doesn't look that interesting, right? But on the front page, everything's cool. Uh, but if you look at some, say, individual artist uh, who maybe is not a professional, you might not click open anything because nothing grabs your attention. And that is the three feet rule because a thumbnail essentially is doing the same thing. It's shrinking things smaller so you get overall view of the image. And if it's not interesting from that distance, or a shrunk down image, then you're no longer going to look at this. And this is what I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Sometimes students will spend time writing the words here, right? Making these little nuts and bolts in the gloves. All that time spent, but the overall design is not good, and so therefore wasted effort, okay? So let me continue here. So one foot away, right? So now that you capture the viewer's attention with a nice design, nice silhouette, now they're going to come closer, and now they're going to start to see your second level details, right? They're defined now, the gloves, uh, the fee, the clothing, and if they're even more interested, they'll probably look at your uh, third level and fourth level details at this point. For example, the writing on this little uh, uh, strip here, the spikes on her uh, on the wrist, right? The way her shoes are tied. But the thing is, the amount of users who actually look this closely at details is very little, okay? As concept artists, we all look at this stuff, right? Because it's interesting. But from a, uh, from a customer point of view, like play, people playing video games, they actually don't really look at this kind of stuff. However, they feel it. So if you take it out, the game will probably feel pretty low budget. Or same thing with a movie. If you take it out, it'll feel low budget. It'll feel too empty, all right? So you have to have this in. 
but you have to understand that most viewers don't stop playing the game and zoom in on something and look at it for the a uh, few seconds right they don't do that they experience it and the example i like to use is always the uh with our students is like the hotel uh, example which i think i used in the past right if you walk into a five-star hotel instantly you know that this hotel is grand it feels expensive it happens within one second half a second so what's happening there is because they're capturing the overall with all the kind of right things right the sconces maybe the marble statues the, the kind of plants they use the floor tiles so those are your second level details but you do feel the third level and the fourth level details being there the refinement of details the railings the little tiny uh, maybe sculptures within the, the wall patterns those are all necessary to capture the overall design but you're not going to go into a five-star hotel and kind of start looking really closely at the wall you feel it okay and this is what makes our industry kind of difficult to do because students like man it takes so much time and they're putting the details in but then at the same time they're like how come my design doesn't look so good I have all these details it's because they're doing it backwards okay we want to do it this way but yet they go but this takes forever and once we have this we still got to detail all that stuff in it goes yes that's exactly what you need to do you have to do a good silhouette a good secondary de uh, details and then you still got to do the third level fourth level fifth level details that's what makes a great design come to life especially again for students okay let's keep going here let me show you this example okay uh, so I put this together a long time ago. I caught the first read example. Okay, so on this screen, this is to kind of counter a lot of younger students who ask, you know, but the little details are important. I go, yes, they are important. However, here's a great example of you're seeing zero details. There's nothing here. There are no screws. There are no buttons. There are no zippers on here. There is nothing. It is absolutely pure silhouette. However, you can recognize every single character in design on this page, right? I'm hope uh, hopefully you guys recognize it as well because these are some of the most famous uh, things in Indian entertainment industry, right? So uh, I don't want to go and run through each one here, but pretty sure you guys recognize pretty much everything on here, right? You see the X-wing, Tie Fighter, Enterprise, right? Toy Story, Wally. -E. I think maybe the only one you guys not recognizes this little guy over here it's kind of too uh this from the 1980s so it might not be familiar with you guys but uh, that is actually johnny number no. five from uh from short circuit great film okay pretty old like 80 84 85 somewhere around that time period right of course mickey mouse so this disney is a very good company at making strong silhouettes because their stuff is being sold to kids so why do they have really strong silhouettes is because they make a lot of their money from the toy sales to kids so that means when, when a young kid goes into a store and they kind of glance across the aisles they want to easily identify a disney toy as opposed to say a competitor toy so their silhouettes has to be so strong that a kid goes oh that's buzz lightyear it doesn't take them five six, six seconds to, to to scan the shelf it happens instantly and they're going to get that sale on the toy so disney is actually a very good studio to look at because every single character every single movie every single prop they do is heavily embedded in good silhouettes right so Anyways, this is a good example of, you know, if someone asks you, hey, details are really important uh, to make a design work. Well, you can always show this, go, well, yes, details are important, but so is the most important is the silhouette, okay? It's the secondary details. So let me just slow down here real quick to explain because some of you might, you know, it sounds kind of confusing, right? Details are important, but then you don't see details here. What's going on? What I'm saying here is the secondary details, right? For example, let's look at this uh, X-Wing fighter here. That gun, that wing, those engines, those are secondary details that break up or make up the silhouette, okay? Without those engines, without that wing, without this thing here, without the nose, this this vehicle wouldn't exist. But it exists because it's big forms. Now, within those, we have thrusters, intakes, cockpit details, uh, plates, wind division uh, device, right, cut lines. Those are your third, fourth, fifth level details. But the secondary details is all you need to make this design work. Okay, so hopefully that's starting to uh, start to make sense here. Okay, let's keep going here. So to summarize how this works, this is something I learned while I was in school, which is the wedding cake or stack stack cake uh, idea. Okay, what you want in your design is here on the left side. This cake is very very stable because you have a solid base. And what is that solid base? It's silhouette and secondary details. These are actually pretty much the same thing okay because you ask what is a silhouette well silhouette is made out of whatever forms inside your, your design what are those uh, forms made out of they're made out of secondary designs right so like our head that's that's a secondary detail it's a big form so this creates your strong base you take away the top layer your cake is pretty stable 
okay so up here this is your third level details those are things we're going to be talking about in a second here and then on top of that we have fourth level details right so if we go back to the um, sr71 pilot his helmets the uh, life support system is carrying those is what makes that design look interesting the third level details are the you know the things on the helmet the microphone the uh the, the oxygen intake right and fourth level details are the screws the zippers the little labels right those are the fourth level so this is what sort you want your designs to have a very very solid foundation which means you could take those things out you only have this and it still works and that goes back to this right i just these are perfect examples of taking the top layers off and the first layer still works now what are what's the opposite the opposite is here right shaky foundation and this is what a lot of students do right and especially those learning at home they think details is what's going to make everything good details is the key so they start actually at the fourth level a eyeball a finger you know the a vein or some kind of mechanism on the gun and we see this in our own students right they'll start designing these really intricate things when they don't even have the top layers yet but they spend all this time say two three hours on it and what happens is because they don't have a solid foundation they start to get burned out they're like man but i created all this cool stuff here but as an instructor we look at it go yeah but your whole thing doesn't look what, what, what are you trying to do here we see all these little ghiblies and all these details but what is the big thing it's because they started backwards so this cake here is very shaky okay so uh this is something that hopefully you spend some time looking at and this the example here has stuck with me forever ever since i was in design uh, in the design school and came out i never forgot this this concept here which is make your shake uh, make your cake very very solid okay all right so very quickly i'm gonna touch about fourth and fifth level details because maybe at this point you're asking what are the fifth you know what are these things well those are generally things like scratches material aging right little grass on the field right these kind of things these are your fifth and sixth seventh level details right the leather the little patterns these little things all important but they're not detrimental if you don't have it it's not the biggest thing as long as your forms work these are all things that if you have time you add it in it's going to enhance it but don't start here okay and even things like uh type key these are all 2d details right logos prints patterns they look pretty interesting but they're actually 2d details uh, they don't change the silhouette whatsoever right so if you run your hand across this bottle here you cannot feel these words nor can you feel these buttons right it's pretty hard to feel the q and the w very very subtle so they become very very low level details because they don't affect any silhouette right they don't break the uh the forms okay Let's keep going here all right so we've got a lot of content here i know the, i'm just gonna run through this episode hopefully it doesn't uh, the, my, my record doesn't crash here uh, hopefully it's okay so visual focus so this is on top of the details we have another layer okay this stuff is pretty complicated but this is pretty cool uh, hold on let me get my red uh, pen here all right so i'm showing you a couple of images some uh, animals we've got witcher the actor from the show and firefighters a car right why am i showing you this because check this out I can actually control or read exactly how your eye is going to look at these images. Let's start with this bird. I'm pretty sure all of you are looking here and then go this way. All of you, right? This tiger, you're looking over here and you're going this way. That's how your eye is flowing. It's going that, boom, right? This uh, T-Rex, you're going here and going this way, right? Boom, this way. That's how your eye is flowing. Witcher, you're going here. Look over here a little bit and then that's about it, right? Everything else is felt. You're looking here down to pendant about this area and that's about it firefighters you're looking at here over here and you're kind of going about here here because the hand is putting something here so you're going to focus that's whoops what do i, what do, I do here turn this back on okay next look at this car delorean you're either looking at the gall wings or you're looking at the front but somewhere around here and you move around somewhere here your eye will go in about this figure eight here or something like this okay this computer you're looking here probably a little bit here little bit here that's about it okay walkman you're looking at this thing and that's about it <laughs> you know you're kind of looking at the whole thing but you focus on here this church you're looking at up here and looking down okay so it's not pretty interesting i'm pretty sure most of you are green uh in the direction I, uh, that i drew the red arrows on right so that's pretty powerful that means that means we can actually control where the user look at your designs and that's where detail starts to matter where your user is going to look at your design is where you want to start focusing once you have the big silhouette 
the next thing you want to focus on is focusing on these areas of uh, interest. So now let's break that down. Why why that worked before? Okay, because for any living thing, be an animal, uh, a human being, we generally always look at from the head, especially if they have eyes. We focus on the eyes first, and we distribute our looks away from that. Okay, so we always start from the head and look into the body. So that's your visual focus. So if you're doing a character, a, a creature, whatever you're doing. This is generally where we spend time on our third level, fourth level, fifth level detail, and you fade that detail out as you go. Everything else is, is there, but we don't want to override whatever's happening on your first level read. Okay, so uh, let me show you what that means by using this example. Okay, going back to this uh, previous thing here, I right? remember this tower and the astronaut or, or the uh, pilot here. So pretty sure your eyes are looking over here and you start to feel the rest of this. Right, you look over here and you start to feel the rest of this. Okay, by feeling, what I mean is that you're not focusing really on these kind of areas. You're letting your brain sort of glance over it, or you let your eyes glance over it, but you're not spending time looking at the buckles on the shoes. You know this person is wearing something interesting, but you're not looking at how the shoe is tied. But you, it is there and you feel it. Okay, same thing with the rest of these things as well. So knowing that, we have to start controlling these detail flow. We generally look at, again, mentioned characters look from head away, from buildings, look at uh, an area of high contrast and we move away from that contrast. And in most cases, we look from top to down. We don't look backwards. We don't look from down to up. So knowing that, how do we, uh, how do we distribute details? Okay, so here's a good example of a strong silhouette or distributing details, all right? On the left here, we have, I just made a, a pattern. Okay, let's just pretend this is our design here, whatever this is, right? It's just a pattern, but your eye doesn't know where to look. So it kind of just looks at everywhere, right? It grabs this, it doesn't distribute, it doesn't move around too much. It just stays sort of uh, right about here, okay? So now let's start controlling the flow of your eye. I'm gonna start putting second level details in here. And notice I put some dots, some dots, you start to see some forms. And you're, I'm pretty sure your eye is flowing this way right now. Okay, so this is your second level detail. You see some stuff and I'm making you flow this way. So now remember our third level details stays within your second level details. It doesn't break the second level because if your third level starts to break the second level, then your second level and the third start to mix, right? So uh, I'll draw a really quick example here to show you what I mean because sometimes students are asked, what does that mean? Okay, so here's a TIE fighter silhouette, right? Boom, something like this. That is your number one and your number two, right? Because your number two details are like the wings, the, the, uh, the window. That's your number one, number two. So you take that number two and here's your glass. Okay, this kind of design here, okay? Now I start to put like, uh, how does this work? Are these uh, octagon divisions, right? That's your second level detail, but that is not breaking the overall silhouette. But if I went in here and go, well, I want my glass to have a form like this and have it like that, okay? Now, this is start to change your silhouette, okay? So that makes sense here? So of course you could do this, but you always have to look at this and go, okay, is it, is it starting to break my first level? Is it making my design worse? Is it helping? It does, is it even necessary? Okay, and then of course you keep breaking that down, that pillar over here, right? the little screws in here, the window cut, the window cut, right? All these little nuts and stuff. That's your third level, fourth level of details. And that doesn't break your secondary. So if I go in here and go, you know what? I want this window to have a big circle right here. Right? I want this to have a circle. Well, that's starting to break your second level because now that's gonna show up over here. Okay, it's gonna be something like this. But that does not break your silhouette. This is only breaking your second level. So this is the constant balance we are doing as a designer to see where do we put the detail to focus your eye? Is it necessary? Do we want that much detail everywhere? So if I went in here and detail every single thing on the TIE Fighter, I don't actually have a strong secondary detail anymore. You don't know what is important, right? Imagine everything here has detail. Whoops, wrong button here. Right, everything here. Then your eye don't know what is the secondary. What am I looking at? Where's the cockpit window? Everything's getting lost, okay? And this is a pretty common mistake that students tend to do. Okay, let me delete this real quick. So let's go back to here. We have a secondary detail and now we add a third level detail. Notice I put the third level details within the second level detail, but I put more of it up here because I know that we read from up to down, right? And we uh, and using that to our advantage, I'm almost sure all of you are looking over here, right? And then a little bit over here and finally over here. So I'm now controlling your vision. 
That's a very powerful thing to have. So when you're designing a film or video game, we want to make sure the user is looking exactly what we want them to look by using this rule. Okay, let's do one more abstract example. Right, another random form here, this silhouette is nothing. So right now when you look at this, your eye only looks at this, okay? But now I'm starting to pick out the second level details here. So now your eye is probably doing something like this, looking from here downwards. Now to enhance that further, I put third level details within the secondary, right? And now your eye is even looking like this, right? It's very much controlled. I'm pretty sure no one's looking this way. Okay, no one's gonna look down here and then go this way. It's all from up to down. Powerful stuff, and this could be a building, this could be a weapon, this could be a character, it could be anything. Uh, but the eye flow is important. So where do we spend the time, right? Back to detail. We spend time here. We spend time, less of a time here, almost no time here, right, in terms of detail. But if you have a lot of time, of course you could put all these in, but you still don't want to put so much detail down here that's starting to override everything that's happening up there, okay? We're halfway here. I think I should take a pause just in case because I don't want this uh, program to crash. So let me take a pause here and I'll be right back. Alrighty, let's continue here. So we're about halfway through here. And I know I ran through a lot of material here, but uh, I encourage you if you're learning, maybe watch this video again because the subject's pretty confusing sometimes. It's like, oh, I don't want details. I want the silhouette to be simple, but then we want this detail. There's a logic to all this and if each of these chapter, uh, chapters are explaining that logic. Okay, let's put that into practice here, okay, which is, keeping it simply complex. This is really aimed for students. This is something we repeat over and over to our students here at the school, which is sometimes they'll pick something that is very, very simple and it's too simple for portfolio. What we want is we want something that looks simple, but in fact is very, very complex and it doesn't require the design that much. So let me run through that to show what I mean, okay? so. Here we have a couple of costume designs or character, however I like to put it, let's say costume design, okay? For students, we generally recommend a flow from the left to the right, okay? We have a sort of a operator, Navy SEAL kind of thing, a diver, right? But a deep sea diving with a rebreather, pretty neat. We have India Jones over here and we have Lewis Hamilton. All three are pretty neat. However, if you look at it, go back to the detail distribution, the silhouette, right? What works well for portfolio for student is actually this one. It has a very nice silhouette. It's got all these nice secondary details like the oxygen pipes, whatever it is, rebreather it is, cool looking gloves. There's tons of stuff breaking silhouette. So what happens is in a portfolio, remember the Chang Li Ryu thing, right, from far away? Let's just zoom this out, okay? That suit looks interesting right away because of the detailed silhouette or the forms that is making. But if you zoom in, it's also very cool, right? You could keep zooming in and go, wow, look at those buckles and all that kind of stuff. So for a student, you don't have to think too much. This base design is really pretty neat. And in fact, you will see this happen everywhere in entertainment design. You'll see this kind of you know costume design show up in a lot of video games, right? Like uh, say your, your Call of Duty games or some uh, sci-fi games, their suits are full of stuff why? It's because it looks cool as a silhouette and it looks cool when you get close, okay? Indian Jones is pretty nice, however, pretty difficult for students because now your second level details, they're still there, the hat, the whip, the jacket, the, the thing going across his chest, his holster, pretty neat, but now your third, fourth level detail is starting to get very, very small, right? The buttons, the uh, little details here, so still good, However, for a portfolio, you know, it's acceptable. Some students could pull this off, but now you have to really focus on making these forms really, really good, okay? And that is a good uh, reminder even for myself here to go back to this one here. So if you mess up some of these details, right, or even the proportions a little bit, it's okay. The overall still looks pretty good. Here, if you make his hat a little bit too big, a little bit too small, it's gonna look silly because you don't have anything else to support uh, support this design. You only have the jacket, the hat, the whip, and the, uh, the gun holster. So now your job is much more difficult in balancing those proportions, right? So if you look at the last one here of Lewis Hamilton, even though this is a cool design, it's an F1 suit, but we don't recommend students to design outfits with this kind of uh, form because it's too simple. The silhouette, if you uh, just look at it, it's a tight suit. There are nothing here to break silhouette. Once you put the helmet on, that's pretty much your only secondary detail. It's the helmet, right? The shoes, the outfit, everything else is skin tight. So it doesn't make a very good portfolio piece to capture your attention. This give it to the, 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 the pros, right? And this is where you rarely see the kind of designs show up in entertainment, right? For example, sci-fi, 
You might see a little bit of this, for example, the workers and stuff like that, but you're not going to see that on the main character. Uh, for example, Mass Effect, right? You're going to have all these armor plates, all sorts of stuff. But the people in the space station, they might have some of this kind of outfit going on, like the nurses, the people working on the spaceships. It's because we don't want to spend a lot of time on that kind of stuff to uh, to build it, so they use a simpler design. But you definitely don't want that in your main character. So in a portfolio, same thing. So uh, because the silhouette is too simple, it's really hard to make it look cool. It's very, very difficult for students. So all these labels, the like AMG and all that kind of stuff, these are all your fifth level details. Remember I talked about earlier, logos, prints you can't feel these when you run your hand across this suit you cannot feel the amg logo so therefore it is a very very low low level detail that only works once you have a strong silhouette so in this case this is something taught students to generally stay away from pretty hard to design now, once you are a pro go ahead you know uh, but uh, when you're learning way more detail here right so even if you go back to, for example the uh, the f1 suits back in the 1970s 1960s they're, li they're a little bit cooler because they have a lot more stuff happening on there but these the sport is becoming more and more clean everything is becoming integrated technology becoming smaller and smaller so therefore you're losing the secondary level details right so anyways i'm a big f1 fan as well so that's why i put hamilton over here is winning everything right now okay so let's go to uh animals or creatures same exact thing Okay, this Prey Mantis here has a really strong silhouette. Very fun to design for students. If you mess up a little bit on the proportions, not that big of a deal. And in fact, this kind of stuff shows up a lot in entertainment uh, projects, right? A lot of films use this kind of design. A lot of video game bosses have this kind of silhouette everywhere, right? And then we have the medium, like this iguana here. Still pretty neat, but now your secondary details are starting to drop. You have this big uh, uh, thing uh, on the, underneath this hang. You have this uh, circle here, some spikes, but way less secondary details than this prey mantis. And then, of course, you have a cheetah, which is probably the hardest thing to do because the second level details is almost non-existent. Everything that he has on here, like the arms and the legs and the head, that's part of the base package. There's nothing that breaks beyond that silhouette, so you have to be very, very careful with this base. So again, we taught our students, stay away from this design. Uh, and you don't see this much in entertainment as well. So now we're starting to get a little bit more of that. But for example, you take Dark Souls, uh, any kind of these games where you fight a huge boss, they're pretty much all here. They're not going to be over here. If it's going to be a creature like this, they're going to put more fur on it. They're probably going to give it a crazy tail or something on the end of the tail, maybe uh, something on the ears, right? They're going to try to break the silhouette. You're not going to see, see a clean cheetah as a boss character in, uh, in, in Dark Souls, for example, right? So all for the same reason, because if it's cool to, to draw, it's also cool to make it into a 3D model. It's also cool for the players to experience it. Okay, let's keep going here. Next, we got props, okay? The pattern, you guys are starting to see already, right? So on the left one here, it's a cool silhouette to begin with because he has good secondary details, very good third level, very good fourth. So even a student just draw this radio or this telephone as is, it's very interesting prop to have in a portfolio. If you could, you know, model in 3D, for example, it looks good. Same thing with this um, 80s computer. Very cool silhouette to begin with. Good secondary, third level, fourth level, fifth level details. If you're a 3D artist, for example, you model this for your portfolio, it's visually pleasing to the eye. It's very cool, right? Now, the Mac is a beautiful design. From a product perspective, it's a beautiful streamlined design. However, in the portfolio, we generally say don't make designs like this very hard to do not too much secondary details not too many third level details kind of boring for the eye but extremely good as a real world product so if you look at again going to sci-fi movies like star wars and all this kind of stuff they don't have too many designs like this right they want things to have have, have this right so you look at uh, you know, uh star wars ip what is another one like uh you know, we already mentioned mass effect right uh, destiny all these kind of things they tend to all swing this way lots of little things happening okay because it's fun visually Okay. Next, environment. Okay, and this is something we see our students do. <laughs> That's why I put this over here, right? So I got three different castles or similar uh, buildings, right? The left one here with these, uh, I think this is the Prague one, right? Really cool secondary, third level, fourth level, and the silhouette is extremely interesting. Here's a Japanese tower, still quite interesting. Not as many details as this one, but both are pretty good. And then you have this this castle tower, right? So all three are real world. And sometimes we tell our students, hey, look, if you're not really good at design yet just start with a real world thing as a base so sometimes we'll pick this okay we're like yes that is real world however this silhouette is too simple there are just not enough secondary details to break the silhouette so your job is going to be much harder to make this cool so instead you could pick another castle for example like a um, like a 
cathedral kind of like Notre Dame type of design in which there's a lot more stuff happening, right? Gothic, which is here, right? A lot more details happening. So even if you don't do anything on top of this design, your base is really, really, really good. Start with a detailed, strong silhouette base and then put your design on top. That's something we repeat over and over to our students. But sometimes once in a while, we'll still see this show up and the even though it's real world, it's kind of boring. Okay, like you look at it visually, it's kind of boring. So look how many games use these two, right? The earlier I mentioned Dark Souls and all that, it's all right here. And recently we had that, uh, what's that game that came out? The Ghost of, uh, I forgot what it's called, the Japanese game made by Guerrilla Games, right? They're using this to their full advantage, right? So um, even the same company, the, uh, the, the Souls Die Twice game, whatever, the same company from software, right? They're using this as well. So you see this sometimes, but pretty rare because it's just hard to make it look good, okay? So um, to make this look good, you have to add all sorts of details to break it up. For example, maybe there's a market down here. There are horses, there are knights camping out. Uh, there's a trebuchet up here. Maybe there's a hole that got punched. So why are all those things adding? They're trying to break up the simple form. They're trying to make it visually interesting, okay? So, and imagine you don't have that in your reference. Now the students have to put those in on their own. And if they don't have the visual library, this is the end result of their homework. Perfectly done, no problem, but visually kind of eh, right? If they do the same thing and visually build this, you know, even if they don't do any design, they don't put any set dressing, they don't do anything, it is good, okay? Because it's visually cool, all right? A few more. All right, here's some examples in interiors. So here we have a post pop going interior, like a hospital, and this happens everywhere in video games because it is fun to look at, it's kind of easier to produce, easier to art direct because things are kind of messy. Here's like, uh, for example, a, maybe a herbalist interior, right? Someone who's mixing all these potions, great looking window, cool looking details everywhere. We've got a lot of cool lights, our jars hang with plants in it, perfect. Use this in an RPG game for herbalist, nothing wrong with it. But uh, for example, you start with a bad base, it's just an empty shack, just a uh, square room and you have a square window with a square thing, glass. Yes, it does work, but for a portfolio, you're not gonna, you're not going to excite anybody. No art director look at it and go, wow, that's pretty cool. This as is, is really pretty cool, right? And of course, last one here, a nice modern looking hotel, great design in terms of experience for a user in the real world, not so much for a student portfolio to build this type of design, okay? Save it for later. So in fact, in the in the entertainment world, we, we rarely use this, right? So uh, because it's so hard to pull off, you have to have a perfect form, perfect lighting, perfect cinematography to make something like this read. And that stuff requires years of experience to pull off. Uh, for example, in the Blade Runner um, 2049, they were doing a little bit of that for their architecture, right? This very monolithic stuff. But the thing is they have uh, Roger Deakins on there, right? The, one of the best cinematographers in the world to make these sets work purely from light and shadow. But students don't have that experience. So you have something this simple, they usually cannot pull it off, right? Another way to think about it is imagine I trace this stuff in with a line drawing, right? Just go in there and just trace everything with a line, okay? Where you draw it as a line drawing. If by the time you're finished, this thing here has a total of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like maybe 50 something lines to make this work. This thing here has hundreds. This thing here has thousands, right? So just by that alone would kind of tell you which one most likely is visually interesting, the one with the more lines, okay? And distributed correctly. Okay, we're almost done here, all right? So that lastly, kind of a summary of that last chapter here is what do you want to pick as your base, okay? Uh, not to say literally pick this uh, subject here, but uh, it's a representation of what you want, okay? You want your silhouette to be interesting, okay? Recognizable, but yet the secondary detail is good. Same with this one. So this one here, the Mac uh, uh, laptop here, probably not the best uh, base to start for your portfolio. So here I'm going to show you guys a couple examples from our students of what I think works quite well. Just two pages, so very quickly run through that. Okay, so here's a, a character some of our students did in the past. So it looks like a bug. So silhouette from a first look looks great, right? It's got a very strong form to make you identifiable. Then of course you have good secondary and third level and fourth level details holding this rock. Here's a vehicle uh, that looks pretty neat, right? Super strong shapes here, recognizable, pretty neat silhouette. Uh, big forms, but also very nice details happening here. I think there's some kind of like vehicle exploration thing on the planet. So it's pretty neat. It's got these oxygen uh, tanks and fuel tanks. Look at all these pistons. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening here. But as a whole, it's interesting from a form point of view. Uh, same with these characters. And same thing with uh, talking about the good base, right? 
Here is a Japanese building. He's starting with a very good base, right? This is from the real world. However, the student added some uh, like these power things, those little radar things, like little shop, right? It's like a mechanic shop, right? That stuff is starting to make your design your own design, right? But the base is good. That's going back to that castle I talked about earlier. If you start with the, uh, the Prague castle, that is a great base. Now build your design on top of that base. And that's what Dark Souls is, right? So they're using uh, medieval cathedral stuff and they're building their uh, their kind of afterlife stuff on top of that strong base. All right, here's another one here. Uh, using a cut up ship as a set. Beautiful base to start with because all this stuff is highly interesting on its own. And then you design this village on top of that. So this too is actually uh, a senior designer now over at, uh, what's, what's that company called? Gunfire Games. They make that remnant from the ash or something like that. So he's like a senior designer there for the last few years. Okay, so one more page. Student example here. All right, same thing with the characters here. Right, uh, very good forms, big silhouettes, big secondary details. We recognize what we're looking at right off the bat. So this 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 project is pretty cool. Like sheep, but what makes it work is that the, the students using Viking uh, motifs, right? So the horns, the shield, the thing. These are all things that make these designs read. But of course, there are second and third and fourth level details in here, right? The robe, the little circle, the hills, and all that. But the silhouette on its own works quite well. So this is a pretty pretty cool design. The sheep in, the, in wolf clothing, I guess, would be a thing. All right? And here's some uh, just production paintings doing the same thing strong silhouette of this character breaking out from the forms here you see this town easy recognizable good details and this this kind of thing shows up everywhere in entertainment design right notice it's always like these shackly stuff so i used to joke with our students it's like the most broken down parts of the earth those tend to show up in entertainment all the time the cleaner parts of the world you know like the modern cities and all that they don't show up too much in video games or even films right we're always going to like uh, these ancient worlds were kind of these tribal things and ruins right? like you look at uh, james bond is going to like istanbul and uh, the rome right they all these places a very compact very dense things and you gotta think why are they doing that it's because again we're creating a visual feast for our audience we want it to feel nice on the eyes you go to a clean environment it works but you have to be, have like again experienced people to pull that off okay like the opening of uh is it Covenant or Prometheus? I forgot which one, the opening in a white room in which the guy is playing the piano. I think that's Alien Covenant. Uh, but anyways, that kind of stuff is hard to pull off because you have to do beautiful cinematography to make that scene work. Uh, in a student's hands, that white room with a guy uh, you know, playing a white piano, really difficult to pull off, okay? So a few more examples, right? Strong silhouette, strong second level detail, third level details, a bridge, right? So this guy is working on like Shadow of Tomb Raider and also the cool IPs. He's, uh, I think this is Quentin, I believe. I think he's over at uh, on the Division 2, over at Ubisoft, I think. So anyways, they're, they're all doing quite well here. Uh, and the reason is because their portfolio is eye-pleasing. It catches the art director's attention. And then because this rule is being followed, big forms, good silhouettes, but still very good fourth, fifth level details, okay? So uh, just a quick example. So you can look at your own work and go, okay, am I focusing on the right thing? Okay, as a designer, especially. When you step back from your design, step back, you know, about three, four feet here, okay, or a meter or so, okay, does it look cool? Is it interesting? But if you only is interesting, if you go to this level and go, yeah, but look at all the little details I have in here. Okay, if you're doing that, your design might not be the best, okay? No one's gonna look at what's happening here in his beard if this whole thing wasn't cool in the first place. You have to make the second and the uh, second level detail and silhouette strong. I think I repeated that probably a few hundred times here, but as an educator, this is what we do. In order for our students to do this, you can't say the thing one time. They'll forget. You gotta repeat it 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times. And this is how we, uh, how, how I teach and how our instructors teach. We just keep repeating. So, all right. Lastly, we're almost done here. How do we put all this together? Because it sounds, we just cover so many different topics, right? Talk about silhouette, details, and uh, eye distribution, flow, and uh, all this kind of stuff. How do you do it? Well, here's a tip we tell our students, right? So in this example, remember the, uh, the, 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 the little cart here that I have from earlier? I brought it back here. The reason is because it's actually pretty difficult to pull something like this off. There are too many details, right? And these things our students will ask, like, but there's so much details in the real world. How do we balance that? 
Okay, this is a what do you call these things? I forgot the mobile kitchens that the cowboys used to have, right? Uh, there's a name for it. I lost it for now. But uh, anyways, if you look at how many things there are, right? Like pots and pans, all these different cooking ware, lights, right? Dishes, all the things to make food with, all the equipment you got here, the coffee, right? Uh, of course, all the food, the knife, the equipment. There's so many things, and the student will be like, which one do I pick? How do I put all this in? Well, for entertainment, if we put all the stuff in here, it's too much. Okay, one, it takes too, too much time to produce. Two, because there's too much details, we go back to our TIE fighter example, you actually start to lose the uh, the overall feel of the silhouette. Okay, so generally what we tell our students is we've got to narrow these details down. So in a case like this, with all these pans, we probably want to remove some of this. Maybe just keep two, get rid of the rest. So right off the bat, this area here tells the viewer it's a cooking station. Here, he's got coffee, four or five different pots, right? Too much details. We want to refine this down to most likely just the pot, maybe this one, maybe the fire, remove all these, okay? And now that might sound funny. You're like, what? But this is real. This is the real world. Yes, but the real world sometimes is too much information, too complex. We have to narrow that down in a way almost like a theme park way of doing things. And that's something I'll be covering on in the next episode, by the way. So, for example, if like, hey, Red Dead Redemption, right? This Something like this is in Red Dead Redemption. Why don't they just look at this photos and just make the game, right? Why hire concept artists? It's because, going back to what I just said earlier, the real world has too much stuff going on. As a designer, we have to pull this stuff out to create the strong silhouette in every single element we have. So this cooking station will have its own silhouette. And that silhouette needs to tell the story of it's a cooking station without you have to think for a second and also doesn't overwhelm your eyes, right? So by keeping one pot, fire, that, it pretty much works. And that's what you see right there, redemption, right? Same thing with this. In the, this thing has almost too much stuff going on. It looks kind of nice, but we could refine this down probably a little bit. We might remove some of this and replace it with just a couple of bottles. We might remove all of this and remove it two boxes, right? Um, too many utensils here, too many colors going on. We might replace that. These are all the decisions a designer start to make. And in the next slide, I'll show you guys how to make those decisions, right? So if you guys go back to Red Dead Redemption, you'll see that their kitchen area here is a lot more refined. They took out a lot of things that break the, the vision and made it more cohesive as an overall design. But that is actually one of the hardest things to do in our, in our jobs here is to make that cohesion, okay? So anyways, so even this cooking station here, right? If this is in the game, we'll probably take out some of these hooks a little bit too much, okay? We don't need all that to tell the story. Uh, maybe remove two or three, these pots, probably remove that one, don't really need, right? The rest of it, probably keep the tools, maybe put one or two, right? So this has a very strong silhouette and tells the viewer exactly what you're looking at, okay? So how do you make that decision? Okay, so here's how we do this, okay? So we have some, uh, well, why do I have a check mark over there? Is that on the, okay? So this is how we tell students to do things. Whatever you're designing, be a character, a environment, interior, or vehicle, Okay, where's my red mark here? Okay, just pick one job. That's it, pick one role. Don't try to do too many because sometimes we'll see students go, okay, my environment, it's a bedroom. It's also where it gets ready. It's also where, uh, you know, he could relax. All, all that stuff isn't in there. And what happens is the room starts to lose focus. Same thing with the characters. Like, oh, it's a warrior, but we also want to put this, like, his personality trait in there. And uh, he also does this and does that. And but by the time you pull out from the, uh, the three feet rule, like, we don't know what the heck your character, <laughs> this costume is about. So instead, just pick one class, right? We all guys, you guys all play RPG games, right? They always do this, right? The fighter or a archer. It's very distinct. So if you're doing a fighter, what makes the fighter work in its secondary details? It's a sword, the shield, a nice helmet, a chest plate, okay? What makes a thief? Okay, a small blade, a little purse, right? He's very slick, he's more streamlined. That sounds so easy. But when you come down to a design, we have seen hundreds of students make these mistakes and because the design doesn't have one job. You look at it and go, what is this thing doing? What is this environment all about, right? So if you go over here to the environment, same thing. Pick one architecture style, pick one function, right? Castle, town support castle, that's all. In the real world, it's a little bit more complex than this, but we're not building the real world. We're building an, ex an experience, okay? We refine this stuff down. So that's why in the RPG worlds, you know, every city you go to, it looks like one architect built the entire city, 
right? So if you go to the swamp, it's like every one dude built all the entire swamp architecture. You go to like the elven city, it's like one architect built the elven city on its own, the castle, everyone's homes, all one architecture. But in the real world, it doesn't work that way, right? You have all sorts of different architecture happening in the town, all sorts of different architects, but it makes it look messy. It makes that first read difficult, okay? So this is from, uh, I think, Bravery Default, right? So one style, that's it. They're using this kind of European Gothic style that we just uh, uh, mentioned earlier, by the way. So it works, one row, okay? So to do that, you want to make a good list, okay? So next uh, episode, 108, I'm going to be putting all this into practice, okay? So I'm going to be designing a... Uh, reboot right of this final fantasy thing which is in uh, i mentioned in episode 106 so i'll be doing the town right this is narshi or narish i'm not sure how you pronounce it i'll be doing the exterior of this town that's one of my designs i'll be doing the interior and i'll be doing these little mechs that show up in the town right pretty cool subject matter really good as a practice for a student right because this stuff here nowadays wouldn't hold up if you're making this into a 3d uh, game for example it won't hold up so we have to reboot this so the things I want to write down is like, that's what I focus on. I'm doing a mineral town. It's cold. It's got uh, material contrast, mysterious. But I don't want to forget everything we just talked about in this episode. That means we want to start with a good base. Something that's really cool without me doing anything. It's really cool. So let me show you the references I got for that. Here's for the town. Okay. So here's like French villages, right? These ancient, uh, almost medieval times villages on their own. They're perfect already. I'm not even doing anything. It's really good. But on top of that, I'm going to add these kind of steam machines and all these things, right? Because this town is being powered by the underground geysers. So they have all these machines extracting the heat from it. So instead of just doing something really simple, I'm going to go for this kind of stuff. Okay, look at all this kind of stuff. It's really cool. Now, of course, combining the two is pretty difficult. That's where my job comes in. That's what being a designer is all about. However, the two things I'm combining are individually awesome as they are. Okay, and that's the huge takeaway here. Uh, what I'm trying to push to you guys as far as our students. They both have good silhouettes. They both have good secondary, third level, fourth level details. This kind of content will make a great portfolio for a student. So that's why this page here, if you just step back a bit, it really feels nice. Your eyes want to run everywhere. It's like, wow, everything's so cool looking, right? So if my final design could capture the same feeling as what you see here in the ref, then I have succeeded in this design. And we'll, we'll see, right? We'll try that uh, in episode 108. But this is what I want the town to feel, that it feels kind of old European French town, and it's got these industrial things. And this is all based on the original IP, because you got to sort of see it here, but very limited here, right? You see the steam machine over here. They have some couple machines over here. They got all the smoke happening, right? So now let's move into the interior. The reference I got for the interior is this one. Okay, so instead of doing it just a simple four walls and a window, that's pretty boring. That's not gonna get my second, third level, fourth level details in there. So look at the details I, uh, what the reference I picked, right? Look at this thing. It's just cool as is. Don't do anything to it. It is good as is, right? Really cool pillars, really good uh, silhouettes on these things. Lots of secondary details to break those forms, right? So if you just pick a simple home, just a straight wall, a table, a window, boring okay you have to use lighting to make that stuff work but if you don't have lighting you just have a line drawing or a simple sketch not that interesting but look at this every single form here is broken up by its own secondary details that's why the silhouette it creates is interesting see this is all the silhouette that's creating right and those breakages in the forms is what makes it visually pleasing to the eye and especially for a portfolio it's going to grab someone's attention because like wow this is cool right just how these references are doing uh, your concept art should do the same thing, right? Look at this thing. It's awesome. You put this in a video game as is. Don't do anything. It is done already. But if I could add a little bit of the machinery stuff in here, then you have your own design and it's going to please a lot of people's eyes, right? So look at these burners, right? Instead of picking a simple one, look at this one. This one's pretty cool. That's an interesting stove. I don't want to just pick a square one with a pipe coming out of it. Yes, it does the same function, but visually it's not as interesting. So this is a much better base. So if I connect that to maybe some couple of pipes and stuff, it's already working. Okay, I'm already 90% done with the design. Okay, same with the bedroom. So here's another burner. Look at all the design here, right? Gray silhouette, gray secondary details like the pipe, the lid, the thing, right? These are all secondary. Also really good third level and fourth level. It just keeps going. 
and that's what we want these references to solve for us, right? Look at these piping, same thing. So my interiors, I want to combine all this to achieve a kind of, uh, it's almost like a steampunk look, I guess. I mean, it literally a steam power in this, uh, uh, this world here. So hopefully we can capture that for our interiors. And lastly, before we finish up here, is for those suits of uh, those mechs, right? So the original concept art that Squaresoft did, the mechs has this medieval armor combined with machinery, and I want to capture that. I don't want to turn it into a, a Robocop, you know, at 209 kind of mech. That doesn't go with the world. I want to go with this kind of medieval technology that Final Fantasy tend to, uh, the, at least the older Final Fantasy tend to have, and I love that kind of stuff. So even for the knights, look at the stuff I picked, right? Instead of picking a boring set of armor, let's pick this armor. This armor has, again, great silhouette to begin with, but it also has very nice secondary, third level, fourth level, fifth level details. So that's where I want to start my base at. I want my mech to have that kind of feel and design and base. Combine that with the machinery that I have here. So look at the machines I picked. All these ancient old motorcycles, old engines, rollery areas from a helicopter. These two, I want to put together. Yeah? And hopefully I could do that and give myself a very, very cool design with a nice silhouette, very strong forms, very good secondary details, but full of third, fourth level details, right? So that's what we constantly push our students to do. Because sometimes it'll be like, I'm just gonna do a medieval farmer. Okay, that's great to have, but that ain't gonna impress anyone in portfolio, like a farmer holding a, uh, a bale of hay, okay? Drawn perfectly fine, but you look at it, it's like, but uh, okay, that's that's interesting. Maybe as a support drawing for a major design, but where is your cool stuff? Where's your knight? Where's your castle? And you know, all that kind of cool stuff. And this is what this whole episode is about, is that when you put details, you got to start with a good base, okay? With a good, strong design as is, strong silhouette, okay? So anyways, that wraps up today's episode a bit. Uh, I encourage you guys maybe to rewind and watch this again, because I know I covered a ton of information here. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can always watch it and again. So in episode 108, I'm going to put these three things here in practice. We'll be doing Narshi, the exterior town design. We'll be doing one, maybe two room designs. And I'll also take a stab at this mech. So because I'm tied for time, I can't finish those things, but we'll just do kind of like a sketchy pass on it. But it should be kind of good enough to, uh, for you guys to see what's happening. So I'll try to do that in episode 108 uh, coming up. So uh, yeah, so this virus crazy lockdown is helping me actually produce a little bit more content for you guys. So thanks for watching. And this is Fane Zhu. I'll see you guys in episode 108. Signing off. Bye-bye.